And gee, there was there were a number of questions around this definition of functional cure. Uh, what does it mean and what do we need to monitor? Maybe that will be of interest. Well, uh, I think, uh, uh, as I said, functional cure, what I've called cure in my talk is functional cure. It's ascension loss. And generally, you want to have uh, it uh, uh, six, six months after stopping treatment, whatever treatment that may be. If the ascension is still negative by then, then technically that's functional cure. And I, I've tried to not try to make a differentiation between cure and functional cure because uh, most of the patients who uh, uh, have uh, uh, functional cure maintain throughout the... Uh, no, it happened in the, uh, Victoria, I think. And then I think I've, I've uh, already indicated to you that the uh, benefits of uh, so-called functional cure, uh, almost 80% uh, reduction uh, in survival, uh, or it's rather improvement in survival uh, or liver transplant, 70% reduction in the risk of liver cancer, and uh, uh, a 72% reduction uh, in liver failure are considerable benefits. There's not much that uh, you can ask for. Though, why is it that there's not 100%? And the main reason why it's not 100% is because some patients already have cirrhosis by the time they lose the S antigen. And cirrhosis, regardless of where you get it from, whether it's from drinking or whether it's from fatty liver or it's from some other form of liver disease, predisposes to uh, uh, liver failure and liver cancer on its own. So the idea is that you want to get cure before you get cirrhosis so that uh, you can uh, achieve all those benefits. If you don't have cirrhosis and you get cured, then the risk of these complications are really minuscule. Uh, and as I've uh, indicated from Jack's question, the chance of the hepatitis B reactivating in a lifetime of patient is extremely unlikely unless they're under heavy immunosuppression. So I wouldn't split hairs too much about cure, functional cure. Trying to get absolute cure uh, is, is, I think, highly unlikely in the foreseeable future. And we shouldn't even worry about it because, first of all, it's impossible to tell whether you've got absolute cure because, you know, it's not possible to take all the genes in your body and check for hepatitis B virus. And uh, it's not possible to uh, extract liver tissue to look for uh, 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 the CCC DNA to see whether it's there because the sensitivity of detection of CCC DNA in someone who has cure actually is extremely poor. Can I just also okay. throw in here, Jack, which is Thank unrelated you. to my um, talk, oh, okay. but, but sorry, sorry, I don't know where we all went to, um, special places. But it's, it's not just hepatitis B where we have this thing infect in infectious diseases as to whether somebody is cured of a bug or not. Um, a really common example that many of you or may or may not know is, but say, chickenpox, where we often get exposed to chickenpox as a child. It disappears as an infection impacting on our lives for most of us for the rest of our lives. But very occasionally as we get older and our immune system gets suppressed, we get it back the same virus is always there in our body, but being held under control, and it comes back as shingles, very occasionally in people who are immunosuppressed or who are, um, you know, when they get old, of which we then we treat it again. So this kind of concept, there's many bugs where we have exposure to them that our body then, they're in our body, but very tightly controlled by our immune system, having been treated or naturally gone away, of which they never bother us ever again in our lives. We are essentially cured of our chickenpox. Occasionally, somebody gets something back where we then manage it, but this is not an uncommon thing. We just don't talk about it as much and it's in people's minds with hepatitis B. But if we have a functional cure, where in essence, the bug is gone in a way that it is impacting on our health and is impacting on the way that it transmits to our loved ones, then we are cured. And yes, it's still there in our body, but so is every other bug we were ever, ever exposed to in our lives. We've just not recognised it in the same way. And I now, think that's a really important thing for people to understand yes. as I go on and give a talk entirely unrelated to that. <laughs> Thank you, Margaret. But, but Let's just try. thought I'd throw that in as, a, as, a, as a, an aside for people, because I don't think a lot of people realise that um, it's one of those kind of weird things that you do when you do infectious diseases.